Well, my name is Dina Bashara. I'm the Program and Outreach Specialist at Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, so I do a little bit of everything, but the bulk of what I do is helping new families and new volunteers who are coming into the program um, kind of go through those initial steps to becoming a big or a little. I also do a lot of volunteer outreach in the community and just work on community networking and building relationships. Big Brothers Big Sisters is an organization that creates one-to-one -one mentoring opportunities. So um, we serve littles, that's young people in the community who are just in need of an additional positive adult person in their life to have a good relationship with. And we find compatible volunteers um, who are interested in being that person for a young person in our community. If you are a parent or guardian and you're looking for your child, um, <clears throat> the best thing to do is to go to our website, uh, bbbsjc.org, uh, and click on Get a Big, and then you can complete a very brief form, and that kind of starts the process going. There's some steps after that, and we do have a significant wait. And then if you are interested in getting involved as a volunteer, you can also go to our website. You can click on Get Involved. There'll be a short form on the website, and then that, again, sort of starts the process of our more involved application um, to become a volunteer. So we get funding in a lot of different ways. Um, about 36% is grants, 28% from fundraising, about 16.5% from local funding, so municipalities and counties, 12.5% from the United Way, and 6% from individual and corporate giving. Through annual or monthly giving, um, it is an awesome way <laughs> to support our mission. Um, attending our fundraising events, being a sponsor of one of our events. Every year we've been collecting school supplies for our little, so donating school supplies. We have folks in the community who will donate tickets for basketball games, football games, different athletic events, tickets to the Anglert for performances, just to create um, opportunities for our matches. Um, you can host a match event. That's events we have in the community for our bigs and littles to do together. And of course, volunteering is a really, really important way to get involved. So that was really hard, especially for the first several months of the pandemic, because so much of what we do, like for so many nonprofits, is really based on one-on-one, -on -one, in person, every step of the way from interviewing volunteers and families to creating that first match meeting between a big and a little and then to the big and the little spending time together especially with our school-based program that's where the big meets the little in the school while the school's closed um, and so they weren't able to meet at all so that was a struggle um, after a while we were able to come up with you know new processes for you know, getting those volunteer interviews and family interviews started again, virtually, outdoors whenever possible, taking advantage of good weather. We had to come up with some pretty robust guidelines for our matches um, because, you know, really what we needed to do was balance keeping our volunteers and our littles healthy at the same time and nurturing those relationships. So that was a challenge and, you know, it's ongoing because the situation keeps changing and so we're still working on that balancing act of making new matches, keeping new matches strong and you know really focusing on health and safety at the same time. Well, we collaborate with lots of nonprofits and organizations uh, throughout the community. Um, on a sort of on a higher level, our executive director, um, our agency is part of what's called the Agency Impact Coalition. That's a coalition of nonprofit agencies who are really working together, collaborating with the government and funding entities with the intention of strengthening the local continuum of care. So that's sort of collaboration we're a part of. Also things like we worked with Table to Table to do a produce pop-up event for one of our family and match events we were hosting and Table to Table came with a produce truck and all their beautiful produce and you know that's just open to everyone, um, volunteers, staff, uh, families and so that was a really awesome opportunity um, 
to be able to connect with them. Um, we also are going to be partnering with a group like Take a Kid Outdoors in November to host an outdoor event for matches. We partner with organizations like ACT for school supply backpack drives and also local community service organizations like Old Capital Kiwanis also, you know, partnered with us for school supplies. So that's kind of the name of the game is <laughs> collaboration. So actually we are excited. We um, recently got grant funding for a new program, which we're calling the Bridge Program. Um, and that's targeting kids who have gone through the family interview process, but are now waiting for a big to be matched with. And there can be quite a delay in there. And so we wanted to try to provide something for those kids and families while they're waiting. So we're now able to offer a couple um, events a month um, with a new staff person that's really targeting those kiddos. And we're recruiting volunteers specifically for those events. They won't be matched one-on-one -on -one with those kids, but it's an opportunity to do sort of a group mentoring a little more casually than if you were formally matched one-on-one -on -one, while still really making an impact um, for these kids who are waiting for their one-on-one um, -on -one big. We're also engaging in vision meetings. Our executive director, she was going to start gathering just community stakeholders to engage in discussion with Big Brothers Big Sisters leaders, board members, staff members, just to keep growing those community connections, help us stay accountable to our values and growth and quality of programming. Um, and then one of our really important goals moving forward that we're working on all the time, um, but it really is an ongoing effort, is recruiting more volunteers, period, because we always have more littles coming in than we have volunteers. A wonderful thing is, is that we don't have to advertise for littles. Like they come to us really purely through word of mouth and perhaps referrals at school, but we have an imbalance of volunteers and particularly male volunteers. So our boys always have to wait much longer than um, girls on the wait list. And then especially, we really want to focus on recruiting and retaining mentors of color, men and women. We have a high percentage of our littles are black and Latinx, but we have a fairly low percentage of black and Latinx volunteers. So it's really important to us to work harder than ever to um, engage communities so that we can, um, you know, recruit and retain more mentors of color.